These are five tools woodworkers never regret buying, mostly. The number one woodworking tool you'll never regret buying is a quality sander. Now in the last video, I didn't include a sander on there and boy, did you let me know it. A lot of people said sander's number one. And I agree, a good quality sander is something you'll never regret. Now I'm not specifically talking about a very, very expensive sander, while I will include some of those. Something like this DeWalt, which is just under $100, is an excellent sander for most people. Especially if you've been using lower powered sanders, similar to this Ryobi sander. I wasn't really happy with that. It's so underpowered and it just doesn't remove material very fast. Now, if you're looking at something a little higher end than say the box store style sanders, I highly recommend the Festool ETS 125. This is an excellent sander at just over $200. I know that's expensive, but it is so worth it. Your finish will come out perfectly smooth every time. You got better dust collection and it removes materials faster than some of these box store sanders. Now I have previously shown the 3M sander as well, and it is an excellent sander that removes material at lightning speed. It has a very high stroke rate, but it also gives that nice smooth finish. I use this quite often in the shop, especially when I have a lot of sanding to do, like tabletops, things like that. This is a sander that you will not regret. The main reason I recommend the Festool for most people that's looking at a higher end sander is because of all the accessories that you can get with it. There's 90 degree sanding pads if you sand the edges of tables and boards and things like that. Keep that perfect 90 degree. There's also contour pads that help you on rounded over edges and they integrate with their dust extractors perfectly. It's just a good system. The number two woodworking tool you absolutely will never regret buying is a good quality planer. A thickness planer is an essential woodworking tool in a lot of shops because you can take all the boards down to the same thickness so if you're making cutting boards or tabletops all those things are perfectly flat and the same and speaking of flat a planer can remove the twists and the cups out of a lot of boards especially if you use something like a planer slit which is just a piece of three quarter inch plywood or some other type of solid material that you set the board on and send it through kind of gives it a stable base now the brand and model of planer you choose will depend on your budget i previously did a video on three different levels of planer from budget to high end and they were the craftsman the dewalt and the oliver so when selecting the brand of planer that you're going to buy for your shop you want to really want to get one that's got a minimum of three blades. The two blades, you kind of want to avoid those. Those are usually the lower end ones. So try to look for the three blade or a spiral cutter head or a helix cutter head. There's a couple of differences there. Uh, basically a spiral cutter head is going to cut square. A helix has got a little angle to those individual cutter heads and that's going to cut much, much cleaner, a little bit quieter and just be more efficient and you have less blade issues versus a regular three blade planer. The number three tool you'll not regret buying is a track saw. Not just this track saw, I've got several to talk about, but a track saw is one of those tools that when you get it, you're like, how did I live without it? Because you're able to break down sheet goods like this giant piece of MDF I've got right here. If you're trying to cross cut that on a table saw, it's just maddening to try to hold that square to the fence and get that cut all the way across there by yourself. A track saw just makes your life easier. Some people ask, what's the difference in a circular saw and a straight edge versus a track saw? Well, the track saw is much faster to set up because you just measure two points, set it across there and make the cut. Because most track saws have a grippy substance on the bottom that helps stick the track to the material, you don't necessarily have to clamp it down every time. Whereas a straight edge, you're gonna to have to clamp it. And then sometimes some straight edges bow and bend depending on what you're using. Tracks are much more robust and you're gonna get that much accurate cut. You can also plunge cut as well as bevel cut with a track saw where a straight edge just makes things a lot harder to do with a circular saw. Now I have the Milwaukee here. I also have the Festool in the shop. Those are my top picks for top of the line track saws. For most people on a budget, I highly recommend checking out the Craig track saw. It's one of the better budget options out there in my opinion. But if you already have a circular saw and you want to turn that into a track saw, you've got to check out the Milescraft track saw guide system. I recently reviewed. That is a phenomenal system just to make 90 degree cuts you'll be very pleased with that and it's only about a hundred bucks now a lot of people ask me well if i get a track saw do i need a table saw or if i have a table saw do i need a track saw can one replace the other no they can't not in most shops with a table saw you're going to be able to add jigs to that like a cross cut sled a jointing or tapering jig. You can also add fences and feather boards and different things like that to your table saw that's gonna help you make various different cuts. And then also you can make thin rips on the table saw where you can't cut thin strips or thin pieces of wood very easily or smaller pieces like small boxes and things like that you just can't cut with a track saw uh, with any amount of safety or ease. So a table saw and a track saw are not interchangeable 
in most shops. Number four tool, probably the most underrated tool on the internet is the oscillating spindle sander. You just don't see these get a whole lot of love. This is a game changer in most shops because it's going to allow you to sand virtually anything. You got a belt sander on top, if you need to sand flat things, 90 degree things, or even things at a 45. And you can also put the spindle on there. That's gonna allow you to sand curves, notches, profiles, get inside holes or handles. Like this thing is such a multi-function tool. And this one is well-priced, this rigid version. This is one of the more popular versions of oscillating spindle sanders. Win makes a version also that's highly rated on Amazon, although I've not tried it. This one comes with all the different versions of spindles and the belt plus the tilting table. This is one of those tools when you get it in the shop, you, you can't believe you've lived this long without it because you'll use it all the time. One of the things I love about the spindle sander is it's not overly heavy and you can store it away in something like a tool cart like I've done with mine. Last but absolutely not least is a bandsaw. You will not regret buying a nice bandsaw for your woodworking shop. It opens up a whole new world for your woodworking. Now I've had a smaller wind bandsaw that was really nice for cutting small angles or small curves in small parts, it's excellent for that. But it just didn't have enough oomph or enough room to resaw boards. And that's where a bigger bandsaw is really gonna shine. Similar to this Rikon, really doesn't matter uh, which one you decide to go with. This is the one I got and I really like it. But it's good for resawing boards. You can also make unique things like bandsaw boxes or even like this little reindeer that I made. I got this template online and was able just to cut a reindeer with a bandsaw and the drill press. It's great for cutting out parts, especially if you use a template or something like that. You can get really close to that uh, part and then you can use a flush trim bit to really dial those, those parts into templates. Uh, cutting curves, things like that is just excellent. A bandsaw can just do so much in a workshop and it really does level up your woodworking once you get one. And for cutting tight curves and things like that, the bandsaw is just an excellent tool to have in the workshop. If you're interested in any of the tools that I've shown today in this video, I'll link them in the pinned comment as well as the description. If you like this video, you'll love the first five tools you'll never regret buying. Click that box, get you the big old virtual fist pump. Also another one of my favorite videos right there.